I respectfully disagree podcast episode 131. Uh you got big bro in the building today, man. What's going on, Kel? What's up, big bro? I can't call it, man. Sitting there watching some football, waiting on my Eagles. Um for those that have been following the podcast, I don't know what you just did. I can't hear you anymore. Now, no, barely. Not now, it's not as loud as it was when you first started. I don't know what just happened, but what it is either. Like normally, like, and I hear it in the recording. Sometimes it's like when it starts. I don't know if it's once the machine sync and all that. Is it any better? Yeah. Okay, like I said, there's like some kind of little brief pause in the audio or whatever but uh long as you can hear me now yeah we're good like i said uh he's a familiar face and a familiar voice with the podcast man uh every time we link up man we have some pretty good conversation i would think so um today's topic man like i don't know what's been going on maybe it's the change of the weather or new year new me attitude about situations on social media and stuff but i know i was having a conversation with my wife last night and i was talking about some of the things that's been trending online as it relates to um i don't know if you, you watch a lot of reality tv and stuff that chick right. telling the guy that the wedding budget should be two hundred fifty thousand, and he told her like hell no nah. so she was like you know as, as broke people energy all this and that so then the uh, Gabrielle Union thing where she was like, she felt that because she was paying all the bills that she was entitled to step out. And she basically admitted to, you know, cheating on her husband at the time. And I'm just sitting there saying to myself, and I'm like, bro, like, like what is going on in society where it's like all these different driving forces as it relates to relationships and just happiness. And then fast forward, the conversation came up again. Like, this was not planned. And, you know, we was just having dialogue, you know, with you on the phone. And we was just talking about different situations and people asking questions, wanting to get to know each other and stuff like that. And you raised a question, if you don't mind me sharing. You was like, somebody asked me what makes me happy. Right. And you said that you was kind of intrigued by that because you didn't necessarily have an answer. So, today, I ain't gonna say intrigued. I was lost. I, I didn't even know how to answer. <laughs> and that's as 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 dope because, like I said, with all those different variables that was going on, you know, and I was having a conversation with my wife, I was gonna do a conversation about what we do with our time when we're here on Earth. And I said to her, I was like. If we're sitting around relying on others to make us happy, then we're playing with our borrowed time, if that makes sense. And what I mean by that is like somebody telling you that the only way they're going to get married is if they have a $250,000 wedding. And you want all these big bells and whistles. And obviously the guy was not willing to go to those links for no wedding. He didn't deem that as important. And when she hit him with that's broke people energy, and I'm saying to myself, it's like, like, what is going on with the male female relationship in terms of like nowadays everything has been like there's a price limit put on everything. And it's like if you're not able to provide me with all these material things then you're not the person for me and that's why i was saying to my wife i was like bro like people don't understand that we're on borrowed time like we don't know when our last day is so if we're running around letting people stress us out because they're not we're not able to buy them things and buy them their peace and buy them their happiness 
And all we're doing is shortening our time, which is already borrowed to begin with. And I'm like, bro, th there's something wrong with that picture. And not to keep rambling, I'm, I'm going to open the floor up to you, but I'm saying all this because I'm, I'm like, in my opinion, a man and a woman should be coming together to figure out how we can win at this game called life together. And then as we're going along, all the things that you like and desire, we can figure out how to get them together. Right. But if you're constantly telling me that the then something's wrong with that picture. Did it cut out on your end for a minute? For a second. See, it did that the last time when me and Rachel was recording. Like, I still have the audio, so I'll be able to sync the audio and all that. But I'm just saying it's like, I'm not going to sit around here and stress myself over a bunch of things that I'm supposed to be doing to only make you happy. And I'm like, nah, man, we, we, we plan with borrowed time. So I'm opening up the floor to you because, like I said, you're the one who really wanted to have this conversation, man. Let's talk. So <clears throat> for me, you know, like anyone who's who's been around me and known I've had a uh, not so healthy relationship slash lifestyle over the years. And so uh, when the person recently asked me the question, well, what makes you happy? It like it threw me for a loop because like I never really sat down and thought about like what it, am I even happy? Am I, am I depressed? Am I like you just go through the day to day motions like all right, I gotta go to work, gotta go pick the kids up, I gotta go do this, I gotta do that. It ain't a separate reflection of like, am I happy right now? My life is miserable. My life is great. Like I don't even think about that kind of thing. Because you're but constantly just, living for somebody else, trying to make sure everybody else straight. Yeah. Right. And so then your wheels are turning. You're like, damn, like, what would it take? Like, am I happy? <laughs> if I'm not happy, <laughs> what's it going to take to make me happy? Like, it's like, bro. So then you actually sit down and you just think about, like, everything that you've done since you've been old enough to date and court. And it's just been like, nobody's ever asked me this type of question. Like, damn, I'm 44. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is great. And so I guess we'll, we'll, we'll start here. So when I worked in the school system, I had uh, come across someone that I found interesting or what I introduced ourselves. And, you know, we've seen each other from time to time, you know, throughout the years mm -hmm. and bumped into each other. And so recently it was kind of like, hey, you know, let's let's hang out. Let's go. Da, da, da. All right. Cool. And so then like start helping do some things. Just, hey, here, let me give you a hand to do X, Y, Z. And so we end up going out having some dinner. And it was just like asking questions. That like never ever in life have I even thought about these type of questions. And again, you sit back and you reflect, and you like, I've been married twice. <laughs> I ain't, <laughs> had, I ain't yeah. even had these type of conversations and with people I was married to. Like, what the world? So like, what is your love like? What's my what? Oh, hold on, let me Google this real quick. Like, what they talking about? <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. So I had, to, I had to kind of flip it. Like, well, what's yours? And then they got to go on through, and I'm like, oh, okay. Hmm. I don't know what mine is. Like, even them breaking down the different, the different types. Category, and I'm yeah. just like, huh. I guess I would be Xbox. I don't know. Like, but, this but is all. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It just saying, it's all it's all new, and they like, well, well, what happened when you dated and you did? That's it. I I, I ain't dated. Like it was, for real. it was. And this is where we start 
going through the weeds on all of this. And if, if you go back and listen to some of our old episodes on this podcast and some of the things that you were saying, and then you fast forward to now, hopefully it'll start making sense in terms of what different people were saying. And I've always, I've opened up on this podcast several times. It's like, I've always taken the the butt of the jokes as it relates to, uh, I didn't have this many notches on my belt or blah, 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 as it relates to different men and, you know what I'm saying? Going after that that prize. If, if, if everybody who knows what I'm talking about knows what I'm talking about. And it's like listening to somebody ask you those questions. And now that your wheels are turning, that's when you start understanding the different quality and the traits in people. And that's when you start determining, like, damn, like I can actually see myself taking this somewhere. This ain't a, you know, here, I'm just trying to take you out a couple of times. I know what my goal is. My goal is to is to get that that treasure. And whatever happened after that, it just happened. Just take it as it goes. Where it's like now, it's like, damn, like. Ain't even thought about the treasure. That's all. what I'm saying. And right. that's why I'm telling you, it's like them are the things that you want out of a partner. Somebody that's going to open them doors to not only make you self-reflect, but then also tell me that it's like, damn, like they're, they're trying to uplift me. Like they're turning me into a better person, a, a better man or a better woman. And that's when you start talking about, like, don't get me wrong. I ain't getting ahead of myself. I'm speaking in, in my perspective now as a married individual. That's when you start thinking about, damn, I can see myself with this person. I'm willing to settle down because I, I have somebody that's challenging me and pushing me to think outside the box to be a better person. Like if you're not having them type of conversations, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? What is it that you want out of life? Then to me, in my opinion, you're with the wrong person because now it's just, uh, what was that movie? Uh, Groundhog Day. You wake right. up and every day is the repeat of yesterday. And then you wonder why all the arguing and the fighting and the bickering just keeps going on and on and on. It's because God, like y'all ain't, you're not trying to uplift each other. You're not trying to motivate each other and figure out ways to where it's like, okay, I might be here, but how can I challenge you and help you catch up to me or motivate you to want more for yourself? So that's right. dope that this person is, asking you these type of questions and you know you laughed about it it's like you know after all this time you you're starting to like damn like i ain't never really thought about what makes me happy yeah i'm sitting there at the dinner table with the person and i'm sitting there like oh man, man. oh no. <laughs> i'm 44 I'm, I'm embarrassed now like in my head I'm like shit <laughs> i ain't never experienced none of this this is wild to be 44 and to have this kind of a conversation, right? 16, no, I ain't even said that's about 26 years of dating experience. You know what I'm saying? Right. But that, but that's what I'm saying is like, you know, when, and what sticks out in my mind the most on a lighter note is like, the, I think it was the last conversation we had. We talking about the club scene and this and that. And it's like, I said, you know, might buy somebody a drink or whatever. And you was like, man, I ain't buying nobody no MF and drink, daughter. Who does that? Like, it was it was a joke. It was laughing. But I'm saying to you, it's just like that. To me, it's just like, how else do you introduce yourself to somebody to have a conversation if you're really trying to figure out who this person is? If I'm in a club just looking for something to take home for the night, nah, I ain't going to buy no drink. I don't care about that. Here, just trying, hey, you going or you not? But if you look across the room and you see somebody that's like, dang, like, I really want to know who that is. Then why wouldn't I figure out a way to open a conversation? Right. And then see where it goes. And if you have gone on dates or dinners like shit, if these ain't the questions that y'all talking about, then what was you talking about at the table? Oh, no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I may have been, like, spoon-feeding 
responses for to get to the, to get to the treasure. To dig there was to a the motive treasure. behind. It. That's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. that's when you start weeding out people who who have a focus in life. Like man, like I already have a goal in mind. I have a career. I have things in place, and I'm gonna talk to you. And if you don't align with that, then you know, no disrespect, but you're not the person for me. Those are the questions, in my opinion, I feel like you're supposed to ask. Unless you're just like, hey, hey, no strings attached. We just going out, have fun, hey, see how long it lasts. But I don't have no real intentions. Then that's different. But it's like, hey, man, you knocking on 50, man. Can't be playing no games no more, man. Either you in or you out. But, I mean, we had that conversation prior to this where I was like, hey, like I'm at a point now where I am looking for that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy. So look, think about the conversation we just had back in November. And I said, uh, I went home to Kentucky for a week, right? And what'd you say to me? He was like, So where'd you go? What'd you do? You go to Paducah, you do XYZ? I was like, nah, I was at that. Nigga, stop lying. What you do for real? <laughs> exactly. Remember that? Exactly. And I was like, no, I got this chill at the house, play PS5, play some golf. We can kick it with my boy over in, in Cape for a minute. But other than that, like, I chilled. I was in the house. <laughs> you and every other person that I told that taught me a lot. <laughs> but, but that's the thing because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, based on your track record, like, we know you. And it's, those are we know ain't nobody ever asked you them type of questions. I know that you done been married twice, and I know some of them circumstances. So it's like I'm not shocked by that. I'm not shocked by hearing that nobody has n- never really asked you what makes you happy because of the motives behind some of the circumstances. Right. It's like. <laughs> And I've said this on this podcast several times. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people's like, man, that's fairy tale. That's make believe. That's only shit you see in a movie. But I'm saying it's like, nah, bro, like, you got to get to know people. Like, there's no way. Like, me and my wife have been together for this is year 16. I will be married 10 years in October. Do you not understand how many people, man, when y'all going to get married? Y'all been together for so long. We dated for like six years before I even thought about asking the question. We lived together for what? Maybe three years. And I'm saying to myself, it's like, bro, I'm not going to rush into this just because society tells you that if you've been together with, if you've been with somebody for so long, you're supposed to get, no, you're not. If I don't know this person, why am I going to rush into something and then they wonder why divorce rates and things like that is is at an alarming rate? It's because people are not getting to know one another. You're just rushing into things. People just want the ceremony. You want that $250,000 wedding so you can say you had this extravagant ceremony, but then two years later, wonder why you on the shade room because y'all divorced. And it's like, nah, bro. Like To me, that's a serious milestone in life and if you really not going into it for the right intentions then you know damn well why it didn't work it wasn't meant to be to begin with you didn't do it with the right intentions does that make sense it does it wasn't done nothing the right intention the first <laughs> one was kind of ultimatum like all right you don't do this then whoop 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 all right what else so let me, so let me ask you this. Stick with the first one. I ain't trying to be your therapist or nothing, but it's like, no. even with that ultimatum, did you feel any sense of happiness or you was just doing it? I guess at the time, it was just like, like she was cool. I enjoyed, she was older, much older. I enjoyed being around her. And it was just kind of like, hey, you can do this or I'm young, what, 18, 19? You know what? Fuck it, come on. So that's what I'm saying. And if, if if you really put it under a magnifying glass, it's like that's oil and water. Unless mentally you had already established that there was nothing else that the world had to offer and you was ready to throw in the towel, that's 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 almost 
impossible to tell an 18 year old, especially coming from that area, Western Kentucky. You really hadn't been nowhere for real at the time yet, right? Other than that little little tri state area, whatever, Kentucky, Tennessee, Cape, you know what I'm saying? You never really traveled outside of that area. No. No. I think so, the others I had been was was what, maybe Nashville or something. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, bro, it's like it's so much out there for the to to offer in terms of the dating world and things like that, different cultures. So then you out here, 18 years old, 19, 20, you end up in Texas. You end up in the military, which what you ended up what? New Jersey, California. Right. At 19 or 20 years old, you know damn well that that was a recipe for disaster, man. It was hey, I did good in Jersey. California was I didn't do so hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's just real life, man. Right. I, That's I just real life. life. I think uh that's when I met uh Creole. I didn't even know what that was. You what? Black and Creole. Oh Lord. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, no no yeah. disrespect to your first marriage or nothing like that. But it's like without having those type of conversations. Without the ultimatum, it never would. Have. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> without laying the lines and saying, hey, you know what? This is somebody that I really want to be with. Then <laughs> it's not surprising that it didn't work out. You can't ask but, an eighteen-year-old to just give up on life, especially with somebody that's older that has well, experience. You remember what she said? Would you let? Would you was at the house? Was told mom and daddy like he ain't got a word. I'll take care of him. That's kind of like music to a kid, here, right? ain't it? was that temporary yeah. happiness. But I guess I can't say I was happy then playing my <laughs> Xbox. That's a temporary <laughs> feeling, man. That's a temporary feeling because by the time you hit uh twenty-five, motherfucker, excuse my language, uh. Now what? But you, you know what? Started seeing the rest of the world. But you know what? Look, and like we talking about it now, and it's got my wheels turning again. I blame that on on my father. Oh Lord, Lord, we ain't going I, down that route. But I get no, no. This is what I'm trying to say. So <clears throat> when she sat down and said that to my parents. If someone said that to my son right now, Jaden, 18, about to be 19, some older lady came up, like, yeah, I'm going to take care of your son. I'm going to whoop, whoop, whoop. I will pull my son to the side and, like, look, you're not being a man by having some woman take care of you. You're not out in the world. You need to work, provide. You know what I'm saying? Right. Those type of conversations. That didn't happen. So in your head, you're a kid, you think, oh, okay, this is cool. This this was supposed to oh Philip be like. Oh Gling Glen. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it, Gling Glen. Sugar mama. Yeah. You had your sugar mama. Yep. And then you got down there to Miami. You ain't got the Lambo. You wanted to leave Gling Glen at the house. Yep. As you were used to. As you were used to. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Leave Gling Glen at the house. That's what I'm saying. It's like. It's funny because they're skits, but there's there's some truth Real to life. it. Right. Truth yeah. to that. That's why it's entertaining. But going back to what you just said, because I feel like that's a very important point. Hold on. That's a very important point. I always had the desire to want my own because I've seen that situation where it's like you get into an argument with people and the first thing they're going to do, get out of my house. Give me all my stuff back. Give me this. Give me that. Well, guess what? If I got my own, you can't say that. Right. I don't need you for nothing. So going back to the original topic in terms of happiness, that's what brought me peace to say that I have my own and I don't have to rely on nobody for nothing. I don't have to ask for nothing. And that's why I tell people all the time. If I ask for something, that's because I desperately needed it. And I came to you at, at my most desperate and vulnerable point. But outside of that, I make myself happy. 
I can't rely on anybody else to make me happy. Otherwise, you're setting yourself up for failure. So that's interesting that you said that. But like you said, you know what I'm saying? You're 18. You ain't never been taught any different. But I'm, in terms of washing clothes, cooking, all of that, I can do all that for myself. I don't need nobody to do nothing for me. So right. if I really want to be with you, then guess what? I really want to be with you. There's there's no other motives behind it right. because I can do for myself. So, yeah, good stuff, man. And then the second situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a little bit better. Can you say that? Started out better. Or not yeah. really? Uh, I mean, again, we'll, we'll be transparent. Uh, out the blue, boom, you're a parent. We got kids. We have a child. We had a child. We co-parented for, what, about four years. Right. They were in Corpus. I was in Houston, commuting back and forth. He started preschool. Of course, his behavior at that time, he's one kid with me. He's another kid with them. So once he gets to school and he's in a situation or a setting with women, he felt he can do and say what he wants because that's how he could do with women when he was at home. And there was no consequence. And so it got to the point where he getting ready to get put out of preschool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like I literally resigned from my job, worked for the city of Houston. I moved to Corpus to help get him together. And so then in the course of that, you know, new area, don't know anybody, things started happening again with the, the mother. So then here comes the second child. So now at this point, you know, you kind of like, all right, like we got two, we're under the same roof. I, you can't say things are, are better. And you're just like, you know what, like, I'm going to be here for my kids, for my family. So you're going to do the right thing. It wasn't necessarily the best thing at the time. But to me, right. I felt it was the right thing to do, right. being, being in that situation. And again, as you said with yours, like, y'all dated, y'all living together. You got to see y'all, everything. Whereas the first four years, it was just a... 20 minutes in, boom, I'm back to Houston. Bring him back home. 20 minutes, you know what I'm saying? What, right. What you see on a daily basis. So once you're there and you see everything daily, then that's when you kind of realize that, like, all right, we on two different pages completely. Exactly. Completely. You, you learn a lot about a person once you move in, man, whether it's cleanliness, cleanliness, uh, cooking. Uh, being able to carry a conversation because you got to think, man, once you first meet somebody, you got all the things to say in the world because you're trying to figure them out. You're trying to learn. Them. Right. But then you hit that period where it's like, OK, I've done been around this person seven months, eight months. And then a lot of that curiosity and uh, some of that enthusiasm kind of slows down. And now we just kind of coexist like we just here a year or two and it's like man i'm tired of looking at this small like, i don't even want to look at you like ugh. those are the days that you got to figure out how to fight through that the most right in my yeah. opinion I like I... Go, ahead. go ahead that's when all them thoughts in the back of your head start creeping towards the front and you got to have that willpower not to react on it because to me, I feel like those are the, are the real tests. It's like, okay, <laughs> what ways can I figure out how to spice this up? Even if it's like, you know what, here, let's just go have a date night. No phones, no nothing. Let's just go talk. Let's just go do something. Like just, hell, sit in the house and just talk. Figure out how to keep that flame lit because otherwise... You can sit here and watch social media and watch these reality TV shows and lust after everything that you see. And then after a while, if you don't have that willpower, you're going to cave into it. You're going to cave into it. But my thing is, like, as you reflect back, it's like, why does everything have to be on, on me? Why do I have to be the one to 
have to make you happy? Why is there a pain? You know what? I made reservation for us tonight. Go get dressed. Let's go X, Y, Z. Everything. Well, why didn't you do this? You don't do this for me. You don't. You know what I'm saying? No, I get it because I'm telling I'm I'm the exact opposite of that. That's why I'm telling you. It's like, bro. And that's a whole nother episode that, that we could have. And I would love for a female to be on here because I don't think it should all fall on the man either. And that's why, I, in my opinion, no disrespect. I feel like that's what's wrong. You have a generation of women that feel that men are just supposed to roll out this red carpet and wine and dine and treat them and make them feel special and this and that. But on the reverse side, nobody's trying to do that for the man. The man is supposed to go to work and bust his ass all day long. He's supposed to pay, take care of all the bills, make all the car payments, put all the food in the house, take all the vacations. He's supposed to do all these things, take you out to eat, buy you all these materialistic things. But who's doing that for him? And I'm telling you that I refuse. Like, nah, you're not. And that's why I'm, I'm telling you, and that's perfect. That's why I said we're talking about borrowed time if i'm gonna spend all of my days doing everything to make you happy i'm losing time for myself i'm stressing myself out trying to provide and protect and make sure you're happy and i know that nobody's giving me that back in return then i'm shortening my time and i refuse no nah. you know what now that <laughs> I tell you what, it's just crazy when you you sitting there talking, and I I just flash back. The only thing that made me really happy at that particular time in that particular relationship and situation, they was always arguing fighting with me about it. PlayStation, Call of Duty, and that's because it was peaceful to just shoot some shit and not even think about it. Hell, it might have been a time or two where you're like, man, I'm. I'm shooting your ass and picturing it in this game. The only thing that, like, I look forward to, you know what? I'm off work. Kids are straight. Do do do. Let me jump on here with Cuz and Bro now for a little bit. And then that, 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 that. But look, even think about this though. How many men say that you know what? Just sitting down, being able to play the game, brings me peace. But then you have a group of women. That tell a man that if he plays video games, that's childish. He ain't a real man. He ain't a this and that. All week about that. What? Then somebody with that go floating around. Um, I yeah, that's that's an everyday week. conversation. But what I'm saying to you is just like, I look at that from a whole different perspective. As long as I'm in here playing Madden and Call of Duty, you know where I am. If I'm not playing the game, and in order for me to get that. Who saw that peace of mind? I'm going to go out to the bar. I'm going to go out to here and there. Now you're sending me out here, not saying that that's an automatic, he's going to cheat and he's going to do this and do that. But you putting me out here in this atmosphere where who knows what could happen. So if I fall in love with, damn, man, I had a good time at the bar. And then I start going to the bar every, every other week or whatever. Now you're going to be mad that I go to the bar too much and I don't come home and spend time with you. And guess what? I was at home with you. Let me play the game for a little while. We can go watch a movie. Or guess what? Here, turn the damn game on. You play with me. We doing something together. But instead, you put all these labels on men. He can't play the game. If he ain't sitting there with his hands all fucking dirty and knuckled up from where he's been working and slaving all day, he ain't a man. If he can't do this, he ain't a man. Like, what is it that we supposed to do? That's why I'm telling you, if you can't provide your own happiness, then something is wrong. I'll be damned if I'm going to let somebody else determine what makes me happy. Hold on real quick. Well, I'm telling you, it's like, I'm I'm not going to ever let anyone else be in charge of, of my happiness. Like, you got to figure out what works best for you and your significant other and figure out what brings you peace. So if that's sitting around playing the game, then guess what? I'm going to play the game. Now, we can find that balance between, you know, me having my own happiness and us doing something together that makes you happy, but I'm not sacrificing everything that means something to me for you. To some that might sound selfish, but it's like, okay, we're in a we're in a marriage. It's supposed to be a 
two-way street. What is it that you're doing to make sure I'm happy? And it just... I was laying there, I'm trying to reflect to myself, like, all right, what is it about me and myself to where I find these people that they cool with us not going on dates? I'm talking years of interactions, and it's like, we didn't go on a jacket box, like, nothing. <laughs> And like it's no, uh, what am I trying to? What's the word I'm looking for? Basically, like ultimate, like look, if you want to date, if you want to see me, you don't have to start putting forth the effort to do something outside of what we're currently doing. And you've been content with that all the. I've been content with that all these years. So now you're in a situation to where like someone wants you to court and actually date them. You like, I don't know how. <laughs> right. So look, let me ask you this and stick with what you're saying and just think about it from this perspective. Um, once we moved away from Clinton and we saw different things, it's like, damn, why hasn't anybody ever taught me to go out and see the world. Everybody always tried to convince you not to leave. Right. So it's like, if you don't know better, how can you ask for better? So that may be the answer to your question. Nobody ever had them kind of conversations. Nobody ever put that pressure on. I want to go out to a nice restaurant. <laughs> His man said Jack in the box. <laughs> I want to go to a nice place to sit down and eat because ain't nobody ever showed them nobody. They don't know to ask for something. If, if they don't know it exists. Wow. That's why I'm telling you now, like, like I have an infatuation with people, thought processes, actions and things like that. Like this is dope. I love this conversation. I'm glad that your wheels are turning, man. I'm glad they turn. And like I said, it just makes you makes me feel I'm embarrassed. Like I'm sitting there, I'm like, damn, I'm down there fifty, and this is shit I should have been doing at twenty, twenty five. You know what I'm saying? But now it it makes more sense though. It ain't nothing to be embarrassed about because that's just life. Like that's just a path that you had to go down to get to where you at now. But even look at it in a sense of, you know what I'm saying, your position with where you work and how you climb in that ladder and things like that. If none of the things that happened before took place, you wouldn't be where you at. You see what I'm saying? Right. Everything happens for a reason, bro. That's why I feel like I, I don't like to hear people talk about they embarrassed or they regret this. Like, nah, it was supposed to happen. Otherwise... <laughs> But you you are, well, I would think you would feel some type of way if you're 44 and you're somewhere with somebody 10 years younger than you and they have more intellectual about life and these things and you damn near 50 and you're like, God damn, I ain't never done that. What the hell's a love language? Who, who think about that? But, you See, know what I'm saying? Those are conversations that, that we've had and you know what I'm saying? Like, it's actually a book, you know what I'm saying? But that's how you get to know people. And it's how you learn to understand one another. Like my wife tell me all the time, my love language is, is gifts. I agree in a sense, but it's like, she knows that I'm passionate about sneakers. Like I have an infatuation with sneakers. So every birthday, every Christmas, you can't miss with getting me sneakers. I was happy as hell yesterday. I know we kind of off topic, but uh, LeBron James released some FAMU sneakers. I woke up at 7 o'clock in the morning trying my best to get these sneakers. And everywhere I went, they were sold out or I couldn't get a hold of them. 
And she sent the email out to one of the local stores here that had them, even though they didn't respond to my email, they responded to hers and they sent her an invoice and allowed me to order them yesterday. I was like a kid in a candy store, but it's like to some people, it's like, oh, that's stupid. Da, da, da. But in reality, that's a look. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just just learning to understand what makes each other tick, what makes each other happy. Sorry about that. She's at Virtue. Shout out Virtue. I'm trying to see what I want off this menu. So look, actually, again, I'm sitting here at this table and I'm trying to think what did the person ask? Um, they asked me uh, what type of furniture that I currently have, like in my oh, own. Lord. Like, do you have a kitchen table? Do you have a couch? You know, sofa. So then, like, I respond. But then I'm, I'm thinking. Remember that apartment. You meet uh, oh, Chuck. I'm yeah. already there. I wasn't gonna call you out on the podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna call you out. I love you that much, man. I wasn't gonna do you like that. But, but you ahead. remember the farm? I had a stove. That boy ain't had nobody kitchen table. Had them fold out. You <laughs> man had like, a mattress on the floor. I literally that that was for the one room. I had a bed in the one. The guest room had mattress. <laughs> Where you think I stayed at hell? I'm down there on the floor, back hurting and everything. <laughs> That's for the guests. I ain't had no kids or nothing then. So wasn't no guests for the guest room. Wasn't nobody coming to visit. So that was a special purchase for you, just so you had somewhere to sleep. Right. But the whole point, so I was out downtown Houston. I met this girl, uh, Miss Weber, and she was like, uh, she was in the business, like accounting or something, but like a oil, like Shell or Exxon, like she making money, money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I'm all, hey, come over, I'm gonna cook you dinner. So I don't fix dinner. Did the whole day. Food good. But we sitting there in that metal chair. <laughs> you ain't had no shame, didn't have no nothing, didn't have no thought. And that's why I'm telling you, it's like that, like you fast forward, and it's like now you put things in perspective and it's like that, that shouldn't come from a, are they materialistic or they, this and that like, nah, bro. Like you gotta have wants and desires in life, bro. Like if somebody come to my house, I would be embarrassed, but just at that particular (laughs) point in time. (laughs) I And then like the food was good. Everything else was dope. And she's like, man, this was really good. She's like, you know, next time we, we'll cook it my <laughs> it, like, it never dawned on you to be like, damn, like she she might have been like uncomfortable, embarrassed. At least she offered to continue to date. <laughs> Look, <laughs> if you'd have pulled that in 2023, bro, I'm pretty sure they probably oh, would just turned around dang. and walked out. They would have Ubered up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> they would have Ubered up out of there. But that's what I'm saying. It's like. And after this, we'll we'll start closing down. But it's like. To me. And I'll ask you this same question or have you give your thoughts on it or whatever. I'm saying to you, I feel like to me, that's what life is about. There are certain periods in life where you're supposed to have that fun, go out mix and mingle, do whatever you got to do. But then you hit that point in life where it's like, okay, what am I working towards? What is going to be my remembrance if and when something happens to me? But that's what I was saying. It's like, you know, we're on borrowed time. So what is it that you're working towards? And it's like, I'm looking at it and I'll, I'll use myself. It's like, okay, I'm in my late thirties. Most people don't even think about retirement and things like that, but it's like, 
at what point in life do I want to get to where it's like, I don't have no worries. All my debt, everything is paid off. I can enjoy trips with my wife. If my kids need anything or need help, once they start entering adulthood and things like that, then financially I'm able to help them other than continuing that cycle of, I ain't got it. I ain't co-signing for nothing. Don't come to me. Like, da, 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 da. like people don't understand it. That's a generational curse. As an adult, in my opinion, you're supposed to be positioning yourself to where if your kids come into these obstacles that we know for a fact that we've faced, we've seen it, we have the experience, then we're there to help them from repeating what we went through. Right. And once you start talking to different people and understanding these things, it's like, okay, I see why somebody would ask what type of furniture you got. What type of this do you have? What type of car? Not in the terms of that's the only way I'm going to date you, but that's also going to tell you where this person is mentally in life. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, oh, somebody who's got a Nissan Altima like me and don't have a Mercedes Benz, we can't be on the same exact path because now you're talking about labels and brands. That's not what I'm saying, but it's like, do you have your stuff together? Do you have your things in order? What are your desires in life? What are your goals in life? You know what I'm saying? Like we laughed and made fun of it, but it's like, you know, for yourself, we never sat at a dining room table growing up. We ate in every room of the house. Right. We didn't Separate. know no better. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Separate. Like, That's what, what I'm saying is like, we never saw those things. So even some of those things now I'm working on. Like we still kind of just float around and my wife just showed me a, a dining room set yesterday. No lie. And we was like, you know what? We might look into that, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, those things matter, man. And the older you get, what are you positioning yourself for? Because if something were to happen to me, what did I leave behind? Some sneakers. Hey, if they ever fall in any kind of bind, they know what to do with them. And the LeBron jersey on the wall right there. They know what to do with them. Got a couple autographed jerseys down here. Hey, you need some help on your car payment? Pull one of these boxes out. Yeah. There's a method to the madness. Like I said, to some, it's just a bunch of sneakers. But it's like, look, I, I BS you not, I, and I, like I said, I hate to get sidetracked. My uh, Kobe Grinches, I'm looking at them in the display case right now. I won't wear them. And I told you the reason for that. It's like once I saw that his wife didn't renew the contract and Kobe had passed and things like that, it's like, no, nah, that's a collector's item at this point to me. Kobe Grinch right now, I could probably get a 1,000, maybe a little bit over. And the older it gets, and if they don't retro that shoe and bring it back out, that's going to be the last time a Kobe Grinch ever released. So 10 years from now, if somebody really wanted that, they're going to pay for it. That's what I'm telling you. It's like, nah, every, everything should have some kind of motive. Or for people that's into handbags and watches, you mentioned watches over the phone. Right. Depending on what type of watch it appreciates over time. You know, some people buy a watch and it, the value goes up the minute they purchase it. Freaking uh, one of my coworkers, he was like, hey, I'm saving. We have a little website where we get these points for uh, achievements and stuff that we have. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to save my points. I'm going to get that whatever. He called out the brand. I was like, okay, what is that? You know, that's the watch James Bond wears and all his movies. No, I didn't pay attention to the James Bond watch. How much it cost? It's ten thousand. You, you what? <laughs> what uh -huh. it do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it tells and da da da. But like, what it do though? Like, well, I mean, technically, it don't do nothing. It's just the design. So you mean to tell me you you want a ten thousand dollar for what? <laughs> like, I'm questioning this dude. Like, are you crazy? But but that's what I'm saying. And now right. now right. we hitting home because it's like you trying to steal somebody else's happiness. 
That watch, he was happy about that watch. Now, Grinch, Mr. Grinch, we talking about Kobe Grinches. Now you the Grinch. Your little empty heart don't nothing make you happy, so you wouldn't know what that feeling is like. You don't have a hobby. What's your hobby? So, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's dope that they're asking you these type of questions because now you can self-reflect and figure out what it is in life that you're passionate about. Do you have a watch collection? Like, I ain't got no collection. Like, I got a few, you know, little watches or whatever. Um, something that I ordered, you know, from, from the work website. Like, me, Kevin, personally, no, I'm not going to spend $300 of my personal money on a watch. But it was a nice watch. I had the points. Didn't come out of my pocket. All right, cool. I'll get it. <laughs> I end up buying a, uh, remember the smartwatch I had, the Garmin? It's got yeah. like GPS. That watch is over $1,000. But it, I, it was justified to me because it was some little program they had where you can make installment payments. So, you know what? If I break this up, six payments, I can do that. But in my mind, like, I ain't going to drop 1000 right here on the spot. Like, look, look, I'm let, not, let, me, let me help you, man. We're going to turn this into a therapy session. <laughs> the, the questions that you're being asked is dope. Your wheels are turning. But don't shoot yourself in the foot either, man, with some of these responses you're giving. Because now you're going to come off as boring. He ain't got no uh, desires in life. Just figure out what it is that you like, man. Like that, But hold on for you. I, I see you getting ready to but that's what I'm saying to you, and I just said, what is it that we want in life? It don't necessarily have to be material things. You could be like, you know what? I like to travel. So instead of buying a $10,000 watch, I can take that $10,000 and go out the country. But you guess what? what? I mean, you, but you're right. At the end of the day, I guess I am born. Like, I never had to. I'm content with just going to work, coming home. I'm at a stage now where I ain't in the club scene. I ain't at the bar every week. I ain't been out in corpus in two years. Go make the face like, nigga, I don't believe that. In my hometown, I have not been out in two years. Like, I'm cool just going to work, spending time with my kids, going home, going out of town for, you know, one of their events. I'm cool with that. But listen to your response. Because that's the first thing you equated it to. So, just say at that point in time, going to the club and things like that, that's what made you happy. Because you didn't you didn't name anything. Like happiness ain't necessarily going to a place or going around people. I just told you, bro, I'm into sneakers. So that me being able to pick that shoe up yesterday, that was my happy. I was happy for yesterday. It it ain't necessarily a it's just what is the sense of satisfaction? It's like, bro, like we can't just wake up, go to work, come home eat, go to sleep, and wake up and do it again. Like, it's got to be some kind of personal satisfaction in between them 24 hours. Only thing that, that I can say that truly makes me happy is just to be able to, because I provide something for my kids if they ask for it. My baby, daddy, I want to have a watch. I was able to provide one. My birthday was yesterday. Daddy, I want a TV for my room. I was able to get a little 65 for mm -hmm. like that. I'm and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, right. and that's right. where you start talking about the love languages again, because some people don't like gifts. My wife don't necessarily care for gifts. So I can go in here and bring her all types of things. Of course, she'll appreciate it. She'll be, you know, she'll love it. She's happy. But I know for a fact that. If I come in and say, you know what, hey, pack your bags, the five of us is going here. That's that's gonna make her ecstatic. Like that's how I can get through to my wife. Hey, y'all, let's go outside and roast marshmallows, whatever. The simplest thing will bring her the most joy. So for some people, it don't even have to be an item. It's just a thought. You you thought about me today. <laughs> I tell you something else too. Uh, with my kids, it's like uh, kind of glad that that they have the 
the parents or the mothers that they have. So, and I've seen this with your kids <laughs> too. I'm cool with staying at the Super 8. I'm just there to sleep. I didn't go to the Motel 6 where they keep the light off because I'm only there to sleep. But like, when we went to Paducah, okay. and what did I book? I think it was a Super 8. It was a Super 8. <laughs> like, uh, it was a Super 8. No, I'm not staying here no other night. You need to get me another hotel. I'm like, man, ain't nothing wrong with this room. <laughs> Is right. now, so I had to go book the rest of the week where y'all were. Where y'all at? Comfort in? I can't remember. Nah, we was at um, I think it was a a Marriott. Was it? Yeah. But I like initially, uh, like when I'm in Texas, you know, I'm looking like, all right, we gonna go to Paducah. Oh, you know what? Here's a good deal. Courtyard. We'll Courtyard. And I'm like, all right, just hear the room. So I got the room for mom and the kids and I. And I'm like, all right, what? The? It was. You get what you pay for, man. We ain't gonna learn that. I've been telling you that for years. You get what you pay for, and not only that, but it's like the sense of relaxation, bro. Me, the I'm not tripping because again, any other time, I'm out all night. I'm at aha. I just need about three, four hours. I'm up. I'm back on the road again. But think about what you just That's said. We're gonna, about- we gonna get off here because I don't want it to mess up no more. You said I'm at IHOP, I'm at here and there. Well, guess what? If I spend that extra $25 or $30, then when I wake up, I can go downstairs and have a full breakfast on the house and I can eat as much as I want to, versus now I gotta take me, my kids, my mom, and everybody to IHOP and drop a quick 60. So you was going to spend the same amount of money if you just no, would have booked I'm the nicer saying, hotel. I see what you're saying. I'm saying, like, typically, I'm by myself. So I'm mm-hmm. cool with staying at them establishments because I've been at the club to three. Man, I went, you know what I'm saying? I Super went A got Wi-Fi. Huh? You're going to be able to hook your work computer up and work diligently at the Super 8. To my hot spot on my phone. You probably ain't even gonna have a chair to sit in or nothing. You sitting on the edge of the bed, back hurting and everything, bro. You get what you pay for, man. Right. And like I said, like my kid, like, nah, we we need to go. Uh uh-uh. uh, we stay. Oh, my bad. <laughs> exactly. It goes back to that table and them fold up chairs you were talking about earlier. Like, bro, it matters, bro. And after this, like I said, we we done. But it's like, think about this. And this is something that we both can relate to. I know your response because you didn't care to a degree. But it's like I tell people all the time, it's like, okay, we grew up in a two-bedroom duplex, Section 8, based on the living conditions and based on everything around us, our mother made the best of it. But you can't tell me that you was willingly bringing somebody of the opposite sex home and be like, Hey, we going to stay here at my mom's and you didn't feel embarrassed or feel some type of way about it. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like that right there is like, you should never be ashamed of where you come from because at the end of the day, we both turned out to be successful young black men and kudos to our mother. May she rest in peace. She made the best of whatever she had. But I'm saying to you, that was always my motivation. I wanted more. I didn't want to have a a set of kids that had to experience and see the things that I had to see. Not from a standpoint of I'm ashamed, but from a standpoint of I know what it took to get us through. Right. If I do a little bit more, I want to make sure my kids don't even have to think about seeing those right. things. Right. So it's like, I never took anybody there, even when I was in college. When Angelina first came home, this was before mama got her house. We stayed at grandmama's. There was a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So it's just trying to, just trying to figure out life, man. That's what it all boils down to. So maybe now, you can sit down in your free time and just try to figure out like, man, like what really, something makes you happy. You just got to figure out what it is. Cause you ain't walking around miserable all day. So something makes you happy. 
figure out a hobby or something, man. Collect yeah. uh find some of them collectors cokes. <laughs> I done <laughs> seen people like nah real real talk. I done nah, seen my people balls make he got, he got hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, you know. I this is a original Coke bottle before yeah, they went right. to plastic type stuff. Like, man, there's all kind of hobbies and stuff. Why you laughing at old buddy with the James Bond watch, man? I ain't laughing. It's just like, nigga, what you gonna do with a ten thousand dollar watch? Like, for what? <laughs> if he keeping him, uh, what's the word, pristine condition and all that. Let me pull at this watch, man. This look like a regular watch. Like, I wouldn't even know with this on your arm. This is ten thousand. But well, for a, somebody that's a huge James Bond person and may not have that watch or miss the opportunity to buy one, 10 years from now, they'll be like, you know what? I'll give you 24. Tell you, boy, I'm sitting here on some shoes that's worth thousands of dollars. So, boy, don't tell me that. Hey, uh, Knock on wood. Let me call back to Clinton. Bring, bring one, of these, one, of, one of our lifters up here. Come on up here. <laughs> <laughs> like real <laughs> talk, man. Take Boog off his arm. <laughs> real talk. But good stuff, man. Great conversation, man. I'm a, look, Dak done threw a pick six, boy. Woo. Oh, yeah. Fly, Eagles, fly. We doing, we taking care of our business today. Great jump off here. Nah, the Philly got the Giants. Um, Dallas is playing Washington. But if Philadelphia loses today, then uh, they're no longer in first place. Uh-huh. So, yeah, today is important, man. That's why I've been sitting there looking back and forth at the screens. Um, but all jokes aside, man, like this is a dope conversation. This w- this is what I like doing with the podcast, man. It's like everything ain't always got to be about sports. So um, dope conversation. Shout out to. 25 years later, break- breakthrough moments. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Like I said, it's, it's all about figuring out life and what to do for tomorrow. That's all we doing, man. We got 24 hours of borrowed time. What are we doing with it? And figure out what to do with the the next set of hours. God willing, we open our eyes and we see it. Yeah. I got to get ready to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Birthday (laughs) down. That sounds good, too. I'm just paying for these two kids. Y'all figure y'all stuff out over there. (laughs) Let's see. No, nope. Because that's a part of this conversation, too, man. You got to get yourself to worry about, you know what? Hey, I'll take care of it. No, I don't like them people. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, man. for my kids. Oh, stuff, man. <laughs> Tell my niece I said happy birthday, dog. All right, boy. Appreciate you, man. We out. Yeah. Ass toasted. Yeah. No competition. I'm Misha Coastal.